Hey everyone, welcome back to Ancestral Healing. Today's video is a little bit of a rowdy one, but I'm here to deliver the message. Don't shoot the messenger. I don't judge, and it's okay if you still do this, but I'm just here to present you with the information. Based on my research, I have concluded that beer is most definitely not a man's drink. Although it is advertised as the ultimate alpha male's drink, the drink of the hardworking strong man, I believe that the effects of drinking a lot of beer over a long span of time is actually feminizing our men. First, it's important to get into the history of beer and discuss what ingredients were traditionally used to make beer. Currently, beer is made from malt, water, hops, and yeast. Traditionally, beer was not made using the ingredient hops and instead was made using groot. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That's G-R-U-I-T, groot. Groot is a blend of herbs that traditional brewers would add to their beer in the Renaissance times and before the Renaissance times. Herbs are essential ingredients in beer, both as preservatives, and to counterbalance the terribly sweet taste of malt. You may hear these herbs referred to as hop substitutes, but that is inaccurate. Hops are actually a Groot substitute. You don't actually need hops to make beer, but you do need something because the hops is used to kind of preserve it. But Unfortunately, hops are not that good for us, especially for men. Before hops were introduced into the beer industry, beer was spiced with over 60 plants in the form of herbs, roots, and spices. Hops were practically unknown in most places in Europe, as brewers relied on a healthy collection of herbs. Time for a little bit of a history lesson here. The story of how hops replaced Groot has origins in both the Protestant Reformation and the Industrial Revolution. There was an anti-Groot campaign, which was very similar in its roots to the absurdity that we have with the current drug on war campaign, very, very similar in nature. And slowly, slowly, Groot was replaced by hops. Around the 16th century, natural herbalist medicine women were being persecuted and were being called witches and herbs were labeled as dangerous when compared to real scientific medicine. It didn't help that Gruet blends in many parts of Europe were exclusive monopolies of the church. All brewers in those areas were practically forced to purchase their Gruets from specially licensed monastic houses at highly inflated prices. In 1516, the German beer purity law was established, dictating that beer only be made with the following ingredients, water, barley, and hops. Now we can talk about the scientific research of the beer that most men and women drink today. It has been confirmed that beer most definitely contains high levels of phytoestrogen, which are substances found in plants. Several studies and case reports describe that excessive exposure to phytoestrogens can have feminizing effects on men, including lowering testosterone and raising estrogen levels. Excessive exposure to phytoestrogens may also reduce male fertility. The culprit phytoestrogen found in hops is called 8 p.m. Although the 8 p.m. concentration in beer itself is quite low, studies show that the intestinal microbiome increases the concentration of the phytoestrogen when consumed. There are studies conducted on the urine of men who had drank even moderate amounts of beer, and results showed that there was an estrogenic effect that lasted for days in their body because the microbial community in their gut kept churning out more and more of that 8PN phytoestrogen after coming into contact with beer. Beer has been shown to lower testosterone in men and increase estrogen in men in as little as three weeks. 
So what happens when men have a decrease in testosterone and an increase in estrogen levels in their bodies? They retain water and gain weight more easily, which can further perpetuate the current epidemic that I believe we have of beer gut and man boobs. No, but in all seriousness, testosterone is responsible for male features such as a deep voice, chest hair, facial hair, sperm production, and fertility. The feminizing effect of too much estrogen and too little testosterone can result in loss of hair on the chest and the upper body, loss of facial hair, loss of hair up here. We see so many men that are balding, enlarged breasts, aka the man boobs, and problems with reproduction due to inability to produce sperm. So I make this video not to, you know, personally attack anyone. It's not even about that. I just want to provide you guys with the information. If you're interested in improving your health and your life and your well-being, it's not just the food. It's also what we're drinking and consuming. And I think it's very important to understand the history of beer and the ingredients that were previously used. There were a lot of herbs, a lot of medicinal properties. That's not, those ingredients are not in beer anymore. So, so if you're wondering what's happening with our men, I'm wondering the same thing. And I just hope that these videos can, you know, provide a glimmer of, of hope because you're armoring yourself with the knowledge. You know, I'm not really one to advocate for alcohol, but there are definitely way better options than beer. I believe beer is probably one of the lowest that we should be consuming. So let's just be mindful of what we put in our bodies. I really do think that beer and people that market beer, they're very, very successful. I mean, most of us have kind of fallen for the whole beer culture thing, but I think we can do a little bit better than that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you've learned something new. Don't forget to check out the other two videos on the screen and I wish you a wonderful weekend ahead.